Shanahan, quote, yeah, we've definitely got to get Elijah in there more and do better with our rotation than we did yesterday. That wasn't the plan going in. It just ended up that way. I've got to make sure that doesn't happen. And I thought what was interesting about it, John, is nobody believes that Kyle's not in charge of it. Like, I, I don't think Bobby Turner or uh, uh, Anthony Lynn just gets to never put Elijah Mitchell in the game. And at the end of the game, Kyle Shanahan just finds out, oh, Elijah didn't play today. But uh, the way he says it there makes it seem like he's a little detached from it, right? Like, I've got to make sure that doesn't happen again. That wasn't the plan. We've got to do better with our rotation than we did yesterday. I don't know. What'd you think? I have a hard time really believing that just because so many skill guys on offense come in and out. I mean, constantly Debo and IU are running on and off the field. There are times you look up, Kittle's getting a breather over there. And this guy never comes off the field, ever. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't blame him for wanting to get Christian McCaffrey the MVP, and that's what it feels like so far through the first two games. Like he's not looking for him to have like an awesome year to justify this trade. It's already well justified. I think he wants him to get the MVP on his watch. Like it's like a family thing. We got the McCaffrey family, the Shanahan family. We took Christian. We made him the MVP of the fucking NFL. We're gonna go into the same I, Hall of Fame class together, Dad. And I Christian. mean, I would right right now. You know, he's. We did this. It was so stupid after the first week. Like, could Travis Hunter win the Heisman? It was like it's gonna be so difficult. And clearly, like, no, Shador's the only guy that would have a chance on that team. Yeah. yeah. But like, winning the MVP, I think early on you can kind of like. I, I would say defensive player of the year is like it's gonna be T.J. Watt versus Micah Parsons the majority of the year. Right. I mean, the Watt name carries a lot of weight. And Micah Parsons is already feels around. like he's too far behind. Right. And he already won Most it. had yeah, three stacks at this point last year. Yeah. It's too far behind defending champs. So you usually got to upgrade. Right. So if you're a 16, 17 sack guy, you got to almost do better. And if Micah Parsons is having his career year, or TJ Watt, like this is the year he finally gets his respect. But I do think McCaffrey would be the lone position guy. Maybe Tyreek, if he had like 130, like Cooper Cup's year a couple years ago. But even that feels very, very difficult. I, and yeah, you I could mean, argue they, that McCaffrey, it's like basically 30, impossible. Games in Miami, right? Maybe. But Tua's numbers would be remarkable. They would. You know? But I don't think people wouldn't be prepared emotionally to give Tua the MVP. It feels like it's already starting, though. You think is Tua for MVP is starting? Well, I mean, you see, he's got like 900 yards passing. Through no, I know. Days. <laughs> I'm just asking, like, you are people you're hearing people talk about it. I, I mean, I just think it's yeah, it's going to get talked about because McDaniel would. I mean, they they would clean up awards, right? If if Miami were to be the number one seed, he would be the lock coach of the year, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're not going to give it to McCarthy. Eagles, Niners, Cowboys. Everyone thinks is going to be good. So one of those teams will have the one seed, and it'll just be they did what they were supposed to do. Yeah, if e any one of those three teams and the Miami Dolphins have basically the same record and they're the number one seed, I think McDaniel's getting it. I agree. Yeah. Pa yeah. And part Plus, of he gets reason... credit for the for just resurrecting Tua's career, right? That's part of it. Yeah, I mean, listen, Tua's got a his his stats aren't as crazy in that first game he threw for four hundred yards. Last week, Bill kind of neutralized him a little. He's four and two, but and I think Lamar is going to be in there. But He's McCaffrey's two, in the mix. Four touchdowns, two picks. Like he already has a couple. That's picks. what two is. Yeah. Oh, it's fuck. The from the highlights. I thought he had nine touchdowns already. Yeah, it's it's the yards. I really did. If you would ask me how many touchdowns, I would have said nine. Well, part of it is you know, uh, Hill Waddle doesn't even have a touchdown. Hill's got a couple, but Mostert has three rushing touchdowns. So some of their, t you know, they they have three rushing touchdowns from Raheem. So, I mean, I'd say McCaffrey early on feels like a. Feels like a candidate. Kyle knows it. The team knows it. He's one of the best players in the league. He's, you know, probably currently the best offensive player on the Niners. Though I think Debo can, on any given week, can be the best. You know, he can dominate. They yeah. just, I get a lot of text during the game. Like, do they even, like, why are they going to look at Kittle? Like, what, what's Kittle doing? Well, John, I, I looked at it this morning. I think McCaffrey has... Uh, I gotta double check it, but it's like seventy percent of the carries, and Ayuk and Debo have you know probably almost seventy percent of their catches or their targets. Jennings has four targets. Like the one thing, and I wonder if this is the week 
Kyle has really overused his stars. Not overused, but he has just really targeted his stars. If Ayuk doesn't play, or we'll see what Ayuk's, Ayuk probably will try to play or want to play. Maybe this is a weak word. Maybe Jennings gets some of the targets. Maybe Juice gets a couple. You know, we are due for a Juice is going to be open by 30 yards sometime soon, and Purdy better hit him because Kyle just spent two or three weeks setting up that throw. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's a week where Mitchell gets nine carries and Juwan Jennings gets six catches and Juice has a couple touches and maybe Ronnie Bell gets a target. But it's not really generally how this offense works. I mean, you remember you and I talked about this a month or two ago, Ray Ray last year, who felt like he was a big part of the offense, had like 14 catches. I mean, it is a very top-heavy offense from a distribution standpoint, always. I would expect if Ayuk is physically able to play and the pain's there, he's going to play. Like yeah. this, this is not this is not the National Basketball Association. When guys are healthy to play, they play. It, it's really that simple. And yeah, I don't know if you've seen the new rules. Adam, Adam Silver's trying to rein that one in. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> yeah, how goes. are they going to pull that off? The the players want to play. Find the teams. Find the teams. Okay. <laughs> you think the players give a fuck? Because they don't. Well, in football, the only reason Nick Chubb won't play this week is because his leg snapped. If he was banged up, he'd play. And everyone plays. And I, I, I saw some people in the chat, and you know, people are going to like, should, should they just rest Ayuk? Well, yeah, in theory, it makes a lot of sense. That's just not the way football works. And Ayuk, it starts with, like, he's playing for big money. He's like, I can get open on these guys with ease. It's, now, I don't know the pain tolerance, right, how bad it really is. Clearly, it's he not He looked like he was in pain. Yeah. So it's one of those things that it's not going to go away. He's going to play all season with a messed up shoulder. Yeah, I mean, you see Burrow's got a case like he aggravated his calf the other day. I, back to Ayuk, though, I do think Ayuk's already pretty well established himself. Like, if the Niners aren't going to want him big picture for a lot of money, his market's pretty strong, and I do think the 49ers get a first-round pick for the guy. I'm, I'm not advocating that. I'm just yeah. saying, like, there's going to come to – the rubber's going to meet the road at the end of the season. They're going to have to make a decision. His value is really high, even if this shoulder he's not for a couple weeks, whatever. Like, it's clear he's a dominant young player. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I hear what you're saying, and I you're right. I'm not disagreeing. That is how the NFL works. I I think they should seriously consider it. De- and part of this is we don't have the medical. The doc might say play or not. This thing is going to just give it three weeks, and he'll be he'll be feeling better soon. But especially on a short week, the idea of resting him is a is I think a good one. I just I'd be stunned if we look up on Thursday and Ayuk's in a hoodie. I just I'm with you. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it either. 